All you do is you take your umbrella, place it through the middle of the diffusing fabric, and then very carefully open up the umbrella. And with a bit of luck, there you go. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers, including really big softboxes like this seven foot umbrella. Yeah, I know it's an umbrella, but if you add in the diffusing fabric, in my book, that makes it a softbox. And it's capable of creating some absolutely gorgeous lighting for portraits or group shots. However, it's also capable of doing some really bad things if you don't use it correctly, particularly in a small home studio environment like I'm in. So I think I should probably start, yeah, let's start by doing it badly and then we'll get to the good stuff after that. So whilst I'm setting this up, you should click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. Uh, let's get a light set. I'm thinking it's probably gonna be quite a big light. Let's get a model in, let's get shooting. To help me out today, I've got the amazing Chloe. Chloe's gonna be the model for today's photo session and we're gonna start by trying to get a nice evenly illuminated portrait. And by even illumination, I want the light to be roughly the same between Chloe's feet and her head. And what could be better than a softbox that is roughly the same size as Chloe? Well, that's the idea, but spoiler alert, if you want an evenly illuminated portrait, do not do what I'm about to do. Don't put your softbox here. I know it makes sense, but let me show you why it doesn't work. The idea is light's gonna come out from all of this. It's gonna light Chloe evenly because it's all evenly distanced. And it's kind of true it does, but let's take a test photo and see what's going on. Okay, Chloe, here we go. Nice sort of head to feet shot. And yeah, I mean, it is evenly illuminated on the direction of the light, but there's something going on. And I'm gonna show you what by taking a second photo that is much closer of Chloe's face. Okay, Chloe, here we go. So if I come and do a head and shoulders portrait, something isn't quite right about the lighting in this picture. And that is because the light is mostly below Chloe's eye line. If your goal is to get even illumination across the whole of your subject, it's not actually the size of light that you should really be thinking about. It's actually the inverse square law or how far away you place the light from your subject. It's the distance that's gonna give me an even spread of light. The size is merely the softness of the shadows. And to show you that, I've got two lights here. I've got a 25 inch and a seven foot softbox. Both have the same Flashpoint Explore 300 in. And well, let's start with a little 25 inch softbox. Okay, Chloe, we're gonna do a little test photo here. So I'm gonna frame this up, feet to head. Being a small softbox, there's an obvious shadow behind Chloe, but the exposure from her head to her feet, well, that is really very even. If I swap over to the seven foot softbox, we're gonna take exactly the same photo, more or less, and see how this looks. Here we go, Chloe. And it looks, well, from a lighting point of view, basically the same. We still have even exposure from feet to head. The shadow this time definitely looks a little bit different, much crisper versus the seven foot softbox where the same shadow is, well, a little less obvious. To get to my f5.6 aperture, I'm actually at half power, and that is perhaps one of the downsides of a large light modifier. It soaks up an awful lot of your power. And of course, being about 12 feet from Chloe isn't really helping the situation either, but the distance is giving me both even illumination and flexible lighting, which means I can actually take full length pictures and headshots. So, Chloe, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's take a few photos like this. Here we go. I can safely call this sensible lighting, but thanks to that seven foot softbox, it's also really soft, flattering lighting. It's perfect for gentle portraits or even group portraits. As you can see, I've moved the light around a little bit. It's not at the far end of my studio. It's right up here where Chloe is going to be sat. Now you'll notice that Chloe isn't sat here at the moment because there's a couple of things I want to do before she comes into the set. The first one is if you're gonna move a seven foot softbox, it's, it's not heavy, but it is really cumbersome. So it's safer to set this up before your model is anywhere near the set. And because I've got it on a little boom arm and slightly boomed out, I've got a sandbag down the bottom here just to make sure that everything stays stable. It's actually a surprisingly light setup with this Westcott seven foot umbrella that 
I probably don't need that, but it's just there for safety. I've also changed the background. I've still got my lovely Westcott background here, but now we have a Manfrotto pop-up background on the floor that looks kind of similar and should give us a nice base to this picture. So everything's in place, but I need to work out the light. Now, when it was over the far side of my studio, we were on half power. How much light do I need here? I don't know, let's find out. Chloe, do you wanna come in and have a seat? I'll find my flash meter. I don't need a flash meter. I could do trial and error. I could do TTL, but if you've got a flash meter, it helps. Okay, here we go. Pop this near Chloe's chin. And we're gonna get this back to F5.6, and that's at 1 16th power. Okay, now, position-wise, Chloe could go anywhere underneath this softbox. It's a really big space to play with, but I've positioned Chloe right on the edge because I want light to come in from the right-hand side and give us a brighter right corner, but I've metered the light for where Chloe is sat, so that should be correctly exposed. The easiest way to see this is to take a photo. Okay, Chloe, let's do a little test photo. Here we go. And what we get is that beautiful soft light from the large light modifier. It's close to Chloe, so we get a bit of fall off of light, so there's a nice shadow in here. But because of its sheer size, there's no real deep shadows. I've also turned the modeling lamp on because it can get quite dark underneath the umbrella and that should help the camera focus nice and swiftly. So I think we should take a few photos like this. Chloe, are you ready? ready. Okay, here we go. I've got the giant softbox just out of frame, so if I get Chloe to sit on the floor, I'm gonna lower that softbox down as well. The horizontal photos look good, but the vertical seems to be working well too. At least that's what it seems like through my viewfinder. And if you wanna find out more about the gear I'm using, check out the video description below. This time I've moved the lights, I'm now down to 1 8 power. It's also gonna change the pattern of light. It's more or less facing Chloe, although she is at the, the edge of the softbox here. Let's just take a test photo and see how this looks. Okay, Chloe, here we go. I'm gonna come from these sides, so I'm coming in at about a 90 degree angle compared to the light, but it's so big that it kind of washes over Chloe. But even at that angle, and even with this large light source, if you get the position just right, you can still get shadow. So we have that nice lit side and shadow side on Chloe's face. Now you might think because this is such a big light modifier that you get no direction to it at all, but that's not entirely true because if I feather the light, that basically means turning the light. I'm gonna change how the light reaches the background, but actually Chloe is still roughly the same distance from the light as she was before. So I don't need to re-meter, it's the same settings as before. Okay, Chloe, here we go. And this time, the background has a little bit of shadow. That adds some depth to this picture and that really helps to bring it to life. Great. And that's all there is to this setup. So Chloe, if you're ready, ready, let's do some shots like this. Here we go. I feel like black and white is the way to go with these images, but I'm using RAW as my format, so I'll probably change my mind later on in post-processing. Let me know in the comments, which do you prefer, black and white or muted color for these photos? There are almost no rules in photography. I mean, there are a couple, but there are plenty of guidelines. And one of them is, whatever sort of light you're using, make sure you position it above your subject's eyes if you want natural looking light. 
That's easier said than done with a softbox of this size, but in my small home studio we did manage it and I think the results were fantastic. It's definitely a light source I'm going to return to. Now, if you've got any questions or you've just enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll get a notification of all the new videos we have right here on Adorama TV. And of course, you must have done by now. And if you haven't, why not click on that subscribe button? I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.